I feel like we're really punching through the wall now of democratizing app development and tools like Superbase and Flutterflow are allowing basically anyone with a pocket full of dreams to build something cool. And that's great. I'm not interested in gatekeeping software engineering, but as professionals, we tend to take for granted certain fundamentals that for people who just discover tools like Flutterflow and Superbase might not be so obvious. You don't know what you don't know. And one of the things that you might not know is why SQL or SQL databases are still king, despite literally being older than the internet itself. If you're using Supabase in your Flutterflow project, you're castrating yourself. If you're not familiar with the following terms, many to one, many to many, and views. The first two concepts are fundamental to relational database design. And the third is a little talked about method of implementing the first two in Flutterflow. Let's take Reddit as the example. In the Flutterflow subreddit, user Keely Studio writes a toxic comment. In Superbase, there'll be two tables here, users and comments. Each row in the comments table will have a user ID column to identify which user wrote the comment. Now here's something you actually can't do in Firebase. You join the tables together on the fly as the query happens, picking out whatever columns you want from each. This is the simplest version of this query. Take everything from comments and join in everything from users. So I'll run this. That gives me everything from comments, the body, the user ID, and everything from users, the display name, username, email. The really cool thing about this is that if I, as a user, were to go into Reddit and change my display name, instead of John Keeley, now I'm John Smith, that's all that has to happen. And now, if any user in the app runs this query again, he gets John Smith. That's a feature of SQL. It's something that Firestore can't do. And this is the simplest possible example of this. The complexity of SQL has an upper limit that you are unlikely to hit. And that's what many to one is. A user may write many toxic comments, but a comment can be owned by only one user. Many to one is really basic. It's like day one on the job as a professional dev, but Flutterflow don't really explain this. You can do joins directly in the REST API layer for Superbase, but Flutterflow doesn't expose that. So the way to make this work is by using a PostgreSQL view. See here in Flutterflow, I can get the schema of my database. Here's my comments and here's my users. But in order to give Flutterflow access to this join, I need to create a view. And to be honest, I don't write my views by hand. I write them with Claude. So you can specify the query, you can specify the column names and Claude will give you a appropriate view. In this case, the view is gonna be called comments with users. It's gonna have everything from comments, everything from users and making sure that there are no fields that are duplicated. And then I can just run this in the SQL editor. It's unfortunate that Superbase doesn't actually have a GUI for creating views. So you do have to do it here in the SQL editor. But once that's done, it'll actually show up in the table editor. Here's comments with users. Now that that exists, I can go get schema again, and I'll actually have the comments with user view. Flutterflow does know it's a view. It'll give you the title view. Okay, so that's many to one. Time for the sequel. Let's think about the concept of roles. Since we're rewriting Reddit's architecture, we should probably try to do this right. I'm sure no one will know that we turned off all security. That's probably fine. But I want to have tiered roles in my database. So for example, we've got two users. We've got John Smith and we got Sally Waits. We also have a collection of roles. So you could be a manager, you could be an admin, or you could be a contributor. Now, how can I write a query such that I can grab a user and their associated roles? Or how could I grab the roles and see which users have that role applied? The first thing you might think is, well, you foreign key it somewhere. But if I put a user ID on a role, then that would mean that that role is now exclusive to that one user, which is no good. So do you need to put something on the users? There'd be a role ID. But that's also no good because what if a user has multiple roles? So it's many to many. A user can have many roles, but a role can pertain to many users. You actually can't foreign key this directly on the tables. And so the way to do a many to many relationship is by creating a new table called a join table. There are different ways to name join tables, but a simple way to do it is to just combine the names of the other two tables. So for users and roles, it could just be user roles. Obviously in production, don't turn off RLS security. It's fine for a demo. And the only fields that I need are actually gonna be just user ID, which is gonna be an int, and it's going to connect over to the users table, ID, save, and also the role ID. So you actually can add other fields onto join tables, but you absolutely don't have to. That's not really the point of the join table. But join tables can get more complex. This is just the simplest version of a join table. 
Okay, cool. And it's also pretty important that these are not nullable. Otherwise, the join table kind of isn't going to make any sense. So I'll turn these off and save this join table. Okay, great. Now I'll just add some entries in here so we can test it out. If I were, for example, to assign to John Smith the role of contributor, and then I could also go ahead and assign to the other user. I think I called her Sally. So uh, Sally Waits, she's going to be an admin, for example, right? But here's the beauty. I can also add another entry and I can say that that same user, Sally, she's an admin, but she is also a manager, right? So now she can have several roles. This means that an admin user, for example, could do things that another role could do. If you want to just be a normal user and an admin or have different tiers. This leads to a paradigm called attribute based access control. The attribute in this case being the role of the user. And it's not just that they have a role, they can have multiple roles. And that's the point of many to many. And of course, this isn't just for users and roles. This can literally be for anything, anything that relates in such a way that is many to many. It's a fundamental SQL paradigm, and it's really important to know about it. Now, as complexity rises, of course, the code's going to get more complex, but Claude is still more than capable of building this kind of stuff and much more. So I'm just going to slap in the names of my columns and it's going to build the view for me. It's even given me different options here. So I'll just take this most standard one and all I have to do is just paste that into Superbase. So SQL editor, new snippet, and I'll create this view. Perfect. So I can just go ahead and test out the view in the SQL editor at its most base level. It'll join it all together, but let's get a bit more specific. What if, for example, I just want to see the admins? Who's an admin? It's Sally. It's not going to be John. Or I could go the other way and say, hey, what roles does Sally Waits have? Admin and manager. So the many-to-many -many relationship works in both directions. And in Flutterflow, I can again just go get schema and that will grab me my new view. And then I can just go ahead and use it in the Flutterflow UI just as always. And those are the basics. Once you understand that you can do this, it opens the door to infinitely more powerful and complex queries in Supabase. If you want to learn more, as I say, you can actually just have a conversation with Claude and try to build your understanding of these concepts. By the way, you might have noticed that I turned off row level security in my examples. Do as I say and not as I do by watching this video next. Thanks for watching.